Welcome back to another Geek of What video and today I'm taking you over the best $600 gaming PC build for the month of October and November 2016. Getting into that Christmas period now and what better way to celebrate than with a pretty sick gaming PC. Now as always it starts off with what kind of performance numbers you can expect to see. In terms of the latest AAA titles, you're looking GTA 5, The Witcher 3, Overwatch, the upcoming Battlefield 1. Uh, you're looking at some really great settings, medium settings, 1080p, also achieve well over kind of 45 to 75 frames per second providing you turn anti-aliasing down a little bit uh, some of the older games as well CSGO, World of Warcraft, League of Legends, Minecraft, uh, the FIFA series those kind of games uh, that are very very popular uh, but easier to run you're going to be seeing frame rates in excess of 100 frames per second at ultra settings so let's kick it off with the CPU now originally I went for an i3 in this build, but it just didn't seem powerful enough. So instead I swapped it out for an i5, Intel's Core i5-6400. It's a quad-core CPU, so rather than messing about with having any hyper-threading to have two kind of fake cores to make four, you have four physical cores for existing cores and that, that's really really nice. The clock speed is a little bit low and unfortunately this isn't an overclockable chip. Nevertheless it isn't going to create a bottleneck with the parts we've chosen and the i5s are very very capable to say the least. In terms of motherboards, they don't directly affect performance. You want a good motherboard if you want to get some good overclocking, but this CPU is locked by Intel, meaning you can't overclock it anyway. The motherboard doesn't look the greatest in the world, but providing it has enough headers for our graphics card, a future expansion cards if you wished, SATA hard drives for SSD speeds as well. As long as it kind of utilizes all of those, it does the job. And that's why I went for ASRock's H110M-HDV. It's a really nice motherboard and supports up to 32 gigabytes of RAM. In terms of the RAM that I chose, 1.8GB of Kingston at Fury DIMM is absolutely perfect. You don't need two 4GB DIMMs for dual channel performance because all that's going to do is populate both the RAM DIMM slots on the motherboard. 16GB, some would argue, is coming the new 8GB of RAM nowadays. So if you do want to get another 8GB stick of RAM from Kingston uh, 6 months, 12 months down the line, you can do that without having to replace what you already have. Uh, this RAM comes clocked at 2400MHz, which isn't the fastest RAM in the world, uh, but any faster isn't going to warrant a good price to perform performance ratio and fitting all the parts in for this budget was a little bit hard so I decided just to stick with the 8 gig for now it would do you absolutely fine. In terms of storage, Seagate's Barracuda is a 1TB hard drive at a 7200 RPM speed. Don't get me wrong, hard drives aren't as uh, reliable, shall we say, and they aren't as fast, they certainly aren't as fast as SSDs. However, I've had great experiences with these Seagate drives. I've got two 4TB ones in my system that I'm editing this video on. I've got a 1TB one downstairs in my living room, home theatre PC, and I also had one in my first ever computer, and two in my server. Uh, so if anyone can testament to these drives, it's me, and I really do trust. 7200 RPM is as fast as mainstream consumer hard drives go, so just grab these and links to all the products I've mentioned will be uh, for Amazon in the description below. In terms of a graphics card, XFX Radeon RX 470 is the perfect choice. Now I'll actually have a review of this graphics card coming up tomorrow, the day after this video is released. So if you'd like to see uh, even more hands-on with this graphics card, then make sure you go and watch that. The RX 470 is one of my favourite graphics cards of this year, it provides a great balance between getting a good price point and good value yet also getting good performance 1080p high and ultra settings uh, whilst achieving some really really nice frame rates and this xfx one is actually the cheapest rx 470 i've found on amazon in terms of the case the corsair carbide spec m2 is a perfect option it looks nice it is a bit more on the pricey side but it is going to uh, warrant an easier build which is much much nicer to build in it is going to warrant better hard drive and ssd mounting support not to mention it's also got a much better and much clearer uh, pathways for things like cables and cable management and I can't give testament enough to this case. It's a really, really solid case and hopefully I'll try and bring a review of one of these out to you very, very soon. And to wrap it all off is a power supply. Now this build isn't particularly power hungry. It only consumes 270 watts of power. Uh, but for me, uh, for a $600 build, I believe that you have to go at least 500 watts. So I went for the EVJ 500 watt 80 plus certified ATX power supply. The 80 plus certification is guaranteed by an external company in a due 
adjudicator and this will verify that the power supply will run above 80% efficiency at all times. Don't get me wrong, an 80 plus bronze, silver or gold certification or even platinum for example that may have been a nice addition but certainly wouldn't have been necessary. You want a power supply from a reputable manufacturer and EVJ certainly are one. And I do hope you enjoyed the parts that I put together for you. If you'd like to see more content like this, more real life builds as well, please make sure to drop a like rating below. Uh, drop me a comment, hit me up on Twitter as well if it gets a bit crowded in the comment section below. Check out some of my reviews. I recently did a review for the uh, uh, Asus Strix headset and RX470 graphics card and a build guide for FIFA 17. But as always, please make sure to make there if I can talk to drop a like rating, subscribe, and as always, we'll see you in the next Geeker Watch video.